Hey yo YouTube, what's good? It is your girl Dom and I'm back with another video. So in this video, man, we got seven people who survived the impossible. I don't know if you've been through one of these situations where you're like, I don't know how I'm alive right now. I've been in that situation, it's a car accident, you know what I'm saying? We swerved and then miraculously the car got back on the road. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sure you've been through this situation. If not, check out these people who have and um, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let's get into it. We've all had close calls, moments of danger that got our adrenaline pumping and made us feel lucky to be alive once we'd made it to safety. But there are some close call stories that defy logic and some people who managed to walk away from a seemingly grisly fate. Mm. Today, we'll be looking at seven unbelievable examples of people who survived against impossible odds. Sometimes, time. till death do us part, takes on a menacing new meaning. On Easter Sunday, 2015, Victoria Seliers went parachuting in Wiltshire, England. As an experienced recreational skydiver, Victoria had made many jumps, but this one would end quite differently. Unbeknownst to Victoria, her husband, Emil Seliers, had sabotaged her parachute before the jump, removing crucial components that connected you the parachute alive. canopy to the harness. As she sped towards the ground, Victoria realized her parachute was faulty, but her backup chute would also not open. She fell a dizzying 4,000 feet before hitting the ground at a speed of 60 miles per hour. That's Such a fall fucked would normally up. be fatal, but the field where Victoria landed had recently been plowed, and she happened to land on a particularly soft patch of earth. She was Bro. seriously injured, but incredibly, she survived. Police would later learn that Emil, a sergeant in the British Army, was having two affairs. He had promised at least one of the women that he would leave his wife. So because you was cheating on your wife with two other females, you chose to try to kill your wife, bro? You trifling as the fuck, buddy. Ooh, that... Leave. Just fucking leave, bro. This shit is not that fucking deep. And he planned to cash in on Victoria's life insurance policy. After I knew it had to be something. In fact, Emil had tried this to nigga. kill Victoria a week before the jump as well by tampering with a gas valve in their home. Emil opened a valve in the kitchen while Victoria Yo! and her children were sleeping. This so not only was you trying to kill her, you was trying to kill the kids too? There's a special place in hell for you. Left to spend the night at his ex-wife's home. In the morning, Bro. Victoria woke and smelled the gas in time to prevent a tragedy. She even texted Emil that morning, <sighs> jokingly asking if he was trying to kill her. Thankfully, luck was on Victoria's side, and both attempts on... Bro, no, she didn't. <laughs> she said, are you trying to kill me? He was like, yeah, bitch, how'd you know? <laughs> Fuck. Life failed. In 2018, Emil was tried for the murder plots and sentenced to life. As imprisonment. you fucking he will have should. To serve a minimum of 18 years. I never understood that. When they give certain people life sentences, that means fucking life. Like the motherfuckers be getting 25, 40, like sometimes two to three life sentences, 120 some years, like. Behind bars. Victoria was left with emotional trauma even after her injuries healed, but soon after went skydiving again to raise money for the Wiltshire Air Ambulance, which she credits with saving her life. In That's April 2020, crazy. Victoria published a book about her ordeal titled I Survived. My personal experience with urology has been It said I married a charming man and he tried to kill me. Nigga, okay. shorty, he tried to fucking to air you the fuck out of here. That's fucking crazy. At the end of the day, you're like, you. Like, he first tried to kill her and the kids, so and then when that wasn't brain. successful, he just went no. Bruh, how the fuck did he tamper her fucking shoe, though? Know? That's why I'm wondering. Was he there? You take the test, they literally ask you. That's fucking crazy. See, 
This is why I don't Trying do these things can activities. Fun, but it can also be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Aaron Langworthy learned this lesson for herself on December 31st, 2011. It's crazy how these people live through this After shit. graduating from university, 22-year-old Aaron had embarked on a trip to Zambia. While on a safari, Aaron took advantage of one of the activities offered along the way. Bungee jumping over the Zambezi River at Victoria Falls. Yeah, home nah. to a large population of Nile crocodiles. Aaron had never bungee jumped before, so she was nervous. But she watched Hell dozens yeah. of others in her group safely. Bro, just because you're watching other people do it does not mean it's going to be safe for you. That means you just watch these other successful jumps. And you're like, okay, try and make you feel better. And then, pow, you're the one who gets fucked up. <laughs> Complete the jump before her. Her own experience, however, Hell would no. not be so typical. As Aaron prepared to jump, a guide helped her assume the appropriate position. Arms spread wide at her sides. And they got it the on The guide camera. nudged her off the platform, sending her flying out over the river. Nearly all the way down, the jump went normally. Until suddenly, Aaron's <gasps> bungee cord snapped. Ooh, is she landed right in the water. The river below. She fell 360 feet before hitting the water. Aaron Yo. suddenly kept her cool, even in the swirling currents of the river. She Hell blew no. and followed them to the surface, but a portion of the bungee cord still attached to her held her beneath the water, and her legs remained tied together from the jump. She had to turn away from the surface to yank on the rope until it came free. She then swam for the surface. Bruh, when she, she lucky was as fuck. pulled from the water at the riverbank, Aaron had spent a total of 40 minutes in the river fighting for her life. After miraculously surviving her fall, Aaron was taken to a hospital in Victoria Falls, but she was soon airlifted to a South African hospital where the facilities were better. She was covered in bruises and had broken her collarbone. But Ooh. suffered no other serious injuries. I Aaron know that spent shit two hurt, weeks though. recovering from her freak accident I, before. I bet you this though. Bet you that bitch ain't going bungee jumping no fucking more. <laughs> it's not funny, but fuck yo. This is why I don't do Caucasian activities. <laughs> returning home to Australia, the bungee company has since introduced measures to ensure uh, this white people shit won't happen again. That motherfucker said, "Ha." Final question. Yeah. Will you bungee jump again? Uh, not anytime soon. Ne She's talking about no, not anytime soon. Bitch, see, that's... Hey. You know what type of mentality that is. We're not going to do... We are just not the people who, for this. This is not our activity. Stay off bungee cords, people. Uh, I don't think Bex too happy with me, but maybe in the future sometime. That will be dumb. That'd be so dumb of you. But I understand conquering your fears. You, you got fucked disaster. up one time, so you want to go back and do it again. Don't. Just, just don't. It's stupid. Only <laughs> to be stranded where you may never be found. On May 26, 2013, 29-year-old mm. Harrison Okene was working as a cook aboard a tugboat operating off the coast of Nigeria. In mm. the early hours of the morning, Heavy swells caused the tugboat to capsize 20 miles from shore. Oh, wow. Harrison was in the bathroom when the ship began to overturn and had to desperately search for a way out. He ended up in the engineer's office. Water began to fill the room. But it Three did not days? Against this man survived in an air pocket for three days, bro. All odds, an air bubble in the small space allowed Harrison to survive. The ship How? Came, as he remained trapped in the air bubble for nearly three days. Harrison had no food or fresh water. He struggled against the cold temperatures, and he had to listen to sounds of animals moving around the ship, which he thought were sharks or barracuda. A diving company was sent to the sunken ship to retrieve the bodies from the wreck. Divers were shocked to discover Harrison still alive 60 hours after the disaster. He was the ship's only it's survivor. Crazy. Alive, alive. Okay, keep them there, keep them there. When the divers came upon him, Harrison was dehydrated and disoriented. His lungs were full of a near fatal amount of nitrogen, but he was alive. He had to be rescued from the wreck very slowly and carefully. The divers strapped him into diving equipment, careful not to panic him. 
and he was led to a diving bell that transported him to the surface. Once there, Harrison was taken to a decompression chamber for two days to account for how deep underwater he'd been. Having walked away from certain death, Harrison continued working as a cook, but he vowed that he would never go back to sea. Oh, he my man, that is a black person's mentality. If we go through some shit and we get fucked up with that, that's the last I'm dealing with that. I'm not going back to repeat the same shit. Nah, you got me fucked up. I know he was happy, bro. Three days. One more day, he was gone. The at a New York City subway station became a miracle for one little girl. In September 2019, a 45-year-old man arrived at the Kingsbridge subway station in the Bronx, walking hand in hand with his young daughter. But to the surprise of the rush hour crowd at the station, the man, Fernando Balbuena Flores, jumped onto the subway tracks just as a train was approaching. Even more shockingly, Fernando pulled his daughter, who was just five years old, onto the tracks with him. Bystanders didn't have enough time to react before the train struck. Fernando was killed instantly, but his daughter impossibly survived. After the train had stopped, two good Samaritans. So because you're unhappy with your life, you try to take your little girl out too? That's fucked up. Leapt down onto the tracks where they coaxed the girl to crawl out from beneath the subway car and lifted her to safety on the train platform. Well, she she hurt. suffered scratches and lacerations, but due to her exact position underneath the train, her injuries were so minor that she was back at home with her mother and other family members later that. So you mean to tell me that her mom is still in the picture? I thought it was a single dad type situation. That's my assumptions. I was wrong. But you mean to tell me that she, that her mom and all her other family is in? You chose it. You're fucked up. That day, Fernando Balbuena Flores was known to suffer from depression and had been on and off medication for it before. Yeah, I understand that. I deal with depression myself, so I understand how debilitating it can feel. That's why my videos are not as consistent as they, you know, as they could be. Because if I'm not in, if I don't feel in the mood or if I feel like my reaction is not going to be what it should be, then I'm not. You know, I'm not going to record because it's not fair to y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's like, that's no excuse to try to kill your girl. Your little girl, she ain't do shit, bruh. He jumped onto the tracks in a one in a million survival story. And thanks to the quick thinking of the two men who lifted her to safety, this child lost her father, but walked away with her life. Antonio that's crazy. Love, whose bag was stolen during the rescue, and Jairo Torres were later honored for their heroism and bravery by Bronx Borough Somebody President stole. Ruben Diaz. So this man is saving a little girl from underneath a train, and you decide that that's the moment you need to steal his shit? It's a special place in hell for you too, nigga. Fucked up people in this world, bro. For window washer Alcides Moreno, a typical day at soon as he said, big... soon as he said window washer, I said hell no. I applied for one of them jobs before, but I declined to go to that job just for this because that's my only thought. I was like, but what if that motherfucker malfunction while I'm outside? I want came no. a fight for survival on December seventh. They get paid good too. Thirty-seven-year-old Alcides and his younger brother Edgar arrived at work as usual. They rode an elevator to the roof of Solo Tower a 47-story apartment building on New York City's Upper East Side. As Edgar and Alcides stepped onto the scaffolding that would normally lower them slowly down the side of the building, the anchors holding the platform came loose. The brothers fell 472 feet in about six seconds. The estimated speed of their fall was more than 120 miles per hour. Edgar fell off the scaffolding, hitting a wooden fence and dying instantly. But to the bafflement of the first responders and doctors who treated him, Alcides survived this unsurvivable fall. Alcides suffered intense injuries. Two broken legs, a broken arm, a broken foot, two collapsed lungs, say, several damn. broken ribs, and a crushed vertebrae. His brain was swollen, and several of his organs had ruptured. 
he received 24 pints of blood and 19 pints of plasma. It was suggested that Alcides had survived by clinging to the platform as he sped towards the ground, likely creating enough wind resistance to slow his fall. When he landed, the platform also provided a barrier between his body and the concrete. In hospital, Alcides was put in a medically induced coma and underwent Yeah, because his fucking vertebrae broke. 15 surgeries. His wife Rosario stayed by his side until he awoke on Christmas Day, three weeks later. Damn. While Alcides required extensive surgery and rehabilitation, he slowly recovered and was even able to walk again, much to the amazement of his doctors. That is crazy. Falling from a height of just 10 stories is almost always fatal. Alcides' survival and recovery was unlike anything medical professionals had ever seen before. Even that after extensive insane. physical therapy, Alcides has lasting back problems and other complications. He His fucking vertebrae was broke. <laughs> you think? Like, of course he got back problems. He's going to have back problems for the rest of his life. He also bears many scars from the accident and he had to grapple with the death of his brother while he got back on his feet. He was left unable I know to work that's crazy. and eventually received a multi-million dollar settlement from the scaffolding company Tractel Inc. after a Manhattan yep. Supreme Court judge found them at fault for the shoddily installed cables on the platform. According yep. to Alcides, he can no longer run, and for three years he mourned his younger brother Edgar, but still considers his survival a gift from God. He has since participated in charity walks to raise mm -mm -mm. money for a church food pantry. He and his family later moved to Phoenix, Arizona, where his wife had their fourth child. Wow. Alcides plans to go to college to improve his English. That is, that is freaking insane that he's still alive. Like, he fell 47 stories? Golly, bro. Man, and y'all say miracles ain't man. You changed your life forever, but you couldn't even remember it. This was the case for Cecilia Shishan. On August 16, 1987, Cecilia and her family were on board the Northwest Airlines Flight 255 at the Detroit Metropolitan Airport. Mm. They were on their way home to Tempe, Arizona, after visiting family. Unfortunately, her parents and brother, along with every other passenger aside from Cecilia, would never make it home. The baby? The wing flaps of the plane had not been set properly, and the left wing clipped a light pole during takeoff. The plane crashed a half mile away from the airport, leaving behind a trail of smoldering wreckage. At the time, it was the second Damn. deadliest aviation accident in U.S. history, leaving only one survivor out of its 100. I don't know, for whatever reason, this is my first time hearing of Flight 255. Nine wow. passengers. Six crew members and two people on the ground were also killed. Cecilia was just four years old at the time, and to this day does not remember the crash. Cecilia was found by rescuers among the wreckage, still belted into her seat, and whimpering beneath the dead body of a fellow passenger. Over 30% of her body was covered with third-degree burns, Damn. and she had broken a leg and her collarbone. The Wayne County, Michigan medical examiner had no explanation as to how she survived. After receiving four skin grafts, Cecilia made a full recovery and went to live with her aunt and uncle in Alabama, who shielded her from media attention. That's the girl had crazy. not realized she had been the sole survivor of the crash until her adolescence and for a while struggled with survivor's guilt until breaking her silence in 2013 for the documentary Soul Survivor. Investigators later suggested that Cecilia's mother had shielded her daughter as the plane went down. I would be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised that I would not be surprised if her mom did that. When I tell you there's nothing stronger than a mother's love, especially a mother who actually loves her child. I'm talking about for the mothers who actually love their child. Because there's some out here who don't. Trust me. I know. It does not remember the accident, but a tattoo of an airplane memorializes the event. Luckily, Cecilia has been able to live a full life despite the scarring and loss of her family. She got married in 2006, and despite thinking about the accident every day, reportedly fly. Yeah, I can only imagine you getting married and none of your family there. Your mom not there, your father not there, like none of your siblings are there.
I can only imagine how that, how hurtful that is and how traumatizing that is. Terrible, man. Flies regularly. Ending a marriage is never easy, but being attacked by your spouse makes it much harder. Must say, is this like the other John? Arianne Wallace told her wife of 12 years, Tiffany Wallace, that she believed they needed a divorce. Marital problems, particularly infidelity on Tiffany's part, had led Arianne to this sad conclusion. Mm. But she never expected Tiffany's reaction. On hearing this news, Tiffany snapped. She pulled a gun. This is for the, this is for all um uh part time lesbians. I like to call them, or sometime lesbians, or you know I'm mad at a nigga lesbian. There's some females out here like they ain't no we ain't no better, bro. Fuck you mean like <laughs> men cheat, female going cheat. Like the fuck like I don't know what y'all think is gonna be different. People are people no matter the fuck what. Like it really don't matter. Like it really don't. If that person ain't shit, that person ain't shit. It don't matter if they man, woman, black, brown, blue, purple. No matter what the fuck they is, Gun they ain't one. shit. Shooting Ariana eleven times, four times in her leg, four 11? times in her privates, and three times in her stomach. She was mad. She was trying to kill her ass. Like she was trying to. She shot her in her vagina four times. She shot her in her bow 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 bow. For real though. Amazingly, even with eleven bullets in her body, Arion remained conscious and aware enough to get down the stairs, leave the house, and ask for help. Eleven shots and she got out of the house. And when Arion opened the door, people had already gathered outside her home. Somehow still coherent, she asked them to call the police. When help arrived. Tiffany was arrested in front of the Wallace home. She told the officers she had shot Ariana. She looked like she ain't shit. Like the bitch looked like she ain't shit to me. Look at her ass. Self defense. Ariane was. Mom, my thing is they was married for t over ten years. I think that's what they said, or twelve years, something like that. This girl knew the one who got shot. She knew what type of person she is. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, she, it, it took her a long time to get to the point to to bring up divorce to that chick because she knew what type of bitch she was. That's fucked up, man. Hospital, where she underwent two blood transfusions and emergency surgery for her wounds. That's fucking Despite crazy. the extent of her injuries, Ariane lived through her wife's sudden and vicious attack. I don't know why I said that. And she was just like, you want to play with me? You want to play with me? Tiffany faced nine criminal charges, including assault with intent to murder, domestic violence, and three charges of felony firearm. Incredibly, despite the extensive injuries, Ariane is slowly but surely recovering from the ordeal. Her family has since started a times, to help bro. raise money for her hospital bills. Which of these incredible survival stories did? Bro, all of them were crazy. From the from the man killing his wife, well, trying to kill his wife from the uh, the damn parachute. After he already tried to kill her from the the get, it was so much shit in this video, bro. The train, the fucking dude who was under the water for for three days, the bungee cord, man. That's the same, bro. This is some crazy shit. Count your blessings. Live life one day at a time. Life's too short. Because same way it says people who survived the impossible, it could have been the other way around. You know what I'm saying? They could have not survived. So live life to the fullest, y'all. I know I am. I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.